Good morning. Good morning. My name is Crystal Rosa, and I am press secretary here for the city of Newark. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, we are going to get started with this press conference. Mayor Baraka will be joining us shortly. Today we are announcing the creation of the Equitable Growth Advisory Commission. This is, uh, we have taken one more step in Mayor Baraka's agenda to make sure that all Newark residents and neighborhoods benefit from the economic boom that is taking place here in the city. To start us off, I would like to call up David Trout from Rutgers, Director, Center on Law, Inequality, and Metropolitan Equity. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's great to be here, and uh, this is quite an occasion. It's in some respects the culmination of a lot of work, a lot of planning work that's going on behind the scenes, and an opportunity to really get down to business. Let me begin by telling you a little bit about the origins of the, um, the uh, Equitable Growth Advisory Commission. It began uh, roughly a year and a half ago when the mayor came to Rutgers and asked if there were recommendations that various faculty from various departments interested in urban life and local democracy um, could make to the city in order to ensure that so much of the, 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 the new resources being developed through downtown redevelopment could redound to the benefit of neighborhoods on the periphery. After all, this is really a historic moment for the city of Newark. Uh, resources that have been lacking for so many years for a population that has been so patient and yet so needy were finally coming to the city. And the question for city government was really how can you ensure that growth, that economic growth, so welcome um, and so invited, uh, actually redounds to the benefit of those communities that really have not had those resources. Economic growth for a lot of cities is not that difficult to do. Equitable growth is very difficult to do. It's complicated. It means that communities that are often in the blind spot of many cities finally get uh, more attention paid to them, to the institutions within them, and to the needs of constituents in those places. And so we embarked on um, a, a series of research projects uh, most of it was conducted by my center, the Center on Law, Inequality, and Metropolitan Equity, which comes out of the Rutgers Law School. CLIM is how we're known. And um, after about eight months of research, we submitted a set of recommendations in a report to the mayor and his administration that outlined many different kinds of things that the city can do. We looked at about five different areas, um, things to enhance equitable growth, particular strategies that cities have used or that Newark um, as an experimenting um, sort of innovative city can embark in on its own. Uh, we also uh, made some recommendations about how to reduce the risk of displacement. Lurking behind many of these questions is the question of gentrification. And so there was a concern that as economic growth grew in the city um, that things would become even more unaffordable for so many of the working class residents of the city. And so a second large part of the recommendations involved how to reduce displacement risk. And then there were about three other areas that we talked about as well. But primary among all the recommendations was a recommendation that the city receive help from a cross sector of experts and stakeholders who can um, really help the city to keep an eye on things as economic growth increases. And that recommendation was to start the Equitable Growth Advisory Commission. And that is essentially its charge. It will be made up of a series of uh, professionals, stakeholders from, um, from community-based organizations, community development corporations, you'll hear later from one of the, from Richard Camareri, who played such a central role in the development, not only of the idea, but of the legislation. Um, academic experts like myself and others at Rutgers and NJIT and really wherever we can find it. And the point is to, um, to convene a group of people who love and understand Newark, 
who appreciate the challenges of the city and its various communities, particularly the ones that don't get as much press from downtown development um, as others. And so um, we have among our charges the uh, ability to convene um, other experts, to interview a variety of experts, sometimes uh, investigating best practices used in other cities. We can look at some of the development initiatives that are currently going on. We can be um, a repository for questions from the public um, who are concerned about particular projects or initiatives throughout the city. Um, we can evaluate the extent to which projects that promise particular kinds of benefits actually, um, actually uh, uh, deliver on those promises. And um, at the end of the day, we can advise the mayor and the city government on the effectiveness of particular strategies and perhaps make recommendations about improvements. So that's really the essence of the work that we've been undertaking uh, over the last several weeks, we've been working on legislation <laughs> to finally uh, put the commission idea into practice, and we're proud today to announce that we're on our way. Um, it's been a long process, and we look forward to the future. Thank you very much. Next up, I would like to call up Altariq Shabazz, Manager of the Office of Affordable Housing. Uh, good morning, everybody. I want to just thank everyone for coming, uh, with standing with the city with this very important endeavor of establishing uh, the Equitable Growth Commission. Uh, I want to thank all of our partners who helped us with drafting the legislation and also to the council who was very supportive uh, an instrumental in the passage. I want to thank sp uh, specifically uh, Richard Camareri of NCC, Joe De La Five of ICC, uh, Ray Acasio of La Casa Donna Pedro, John Palmieri, of course, the Deputy Mayor of Economic Development, and of course, uh, the Mayor for giving us the impetus and the vision to accomplish something that's so necessary. And David Trout from Climb, of course, and Rutgers as our very uh, important park. And like she said, my name is uh, Al Tariq Shabazz. I'm the manager of the Office of Affordability and Sustainable Housing. And I just wanted to talk very briefly about what the office does and our role in the establishment of the Equitable Growth Commission. Uh, Matthew Desmond, who wrote the book Evicted, said, home is where children find safety and security, where we find our identities and where citizenship starts. It usually starts with believing you are part of a community and it is essential to having a stable home. The mayor understands this in a very profound way, and he understands the necessity of fair and decent housing and, see, and sees its urgency because of the rapid growth that's happening here in the city. We also understand that it's not enough to say that we won't be the next example of a gentrified city, but we must take very proactive measures in preventing that from happening. Uh, and the formation of the Office of Affordability is just one of the, uh, is the manifestation of the mayor's belief of that, and it's just one effort in the broader anti-displacement strategy that the mayor has employed. Uh, so the office that, you know, I'm the head of, we have some very specific functions. The first is the enforcement of the IZO, the Inclusionary Zoning Ordinance, that will require any developments uh, all throughout the city that's over 30 units to have 20% uh, affordable. Right now, we have around 18 of these projects that have been uh, approved by zoning and planning that will be subject to the inclu uh, inclusionary zoning ordinance, and this represents over 850 units of affordable housing. Secondly, we've been charged with designing a mechanism to have the developers who are subject to IZO report to the city so we can make, make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Also, uh, and, and very importantly, we were charged with creating a comprehensive affordable housing plan for the city. Uh, and, and the basis of this affordable housing plan is to tell us where the city is in terms of affordable housing and where we need to go in terms of affordable housing. And we're talking about the targets, how many units we need to bring online, where, this, where in the city the units are needed, and also what percentage of AMI these units should be. Uh, so it's really about creating and preserving affordable housing in the city of Newark. And also, we need to understand how to better serve the, demo the changing demographics of the city in terms of age 
and also household makeup and et cetera. Not necessarily new people coming in, but who is here and how can we better serve them. Uh, and also we've been charged with enforcing certain elements of the new amended tax abatement ordinance, primarily the minority co-developer requirement. So we have a requirement that if you receive a tax abatement in the city of Newark, that you will have to have a minority co-developer. We've started the process of compiling a list and also helping uh, minority co-developers not just be subcontractors, but to have equity in these deals in the town that they've lived in and worked in. And last but certainly not least, we have been charged with establishing uh, the Equitable Growth Commission. And yesterday the legislation was passed that's going to allow us to establish the commission. And uh, so now we're going to start the work of doing that. And I, I left out one more thing, and, and probably the most important thing. Our office right upstairs in room 110, we're here to provide basic services for residents of the city that's looking for affordable options. And I think that is important. The last thing I want to say, I think that is important that we understand that these measures that are taken are not just to mitigate what some may see as the adverse effects of some of the development that's happening, but these measures are essential to the development of the city of Newark. Because with buildings and roads and bridges, the most important piece of infrastructure in the city of Newark that we have are going to be the people of Newark. So thank you. Moving right along to our next speaker, Richard Camariri, New Community Corporation Special Projects Director and Chairperson of the North Community Development Network. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Good morning. Thank you, Tariq. Uh, thank you, Professor Trout, for providing such an expansive and comprehensive contextualizing of why we're here. Um, and uh, first, a complaint. Mr. Mayor, your administration is making me feel my age because uh, you're doing things that I know I've been waiting a long time to see in the city of Newark, um, and I think a few other people have too. Um, and while I'm, you know, I will constructively critique when necessary, credit where credit is due. I think your administration has brought some embedded principles of equity, accompanying policies and programs to make them real, um, be it the inclusionary zoning ordinance, be it the right to counsel efforts, uh, strengthening of rent control. This today's announcement of our commission is just another large step in the way towards uh, again embedding equity as a full-fledged system and commitment of the city of Newark. Uh, it provides a structure and infrastructure to help do that, continue what we've been doing. Uh, those of us who are in the community development sector, the neighborhood-based, community-based agency sector, like I said, we've been waiting a long time for this kind of thing. Um, I said I work for New Community Corporation. We have Ironbound Community Corporation. The Newark Community Development Network is a network of all the key groups in the city, be it Ironbound, La Casa, Unified Valesburg, Urban League, um, New Community. I see we have uh, Lincoln Park Coast Cultural District here. We have stalwarts like Ms. Wallace here from IYO. Um, and uh, we have allies like uh, the Housing Community Development Network of New Jersey that have been with us for 30 years now. When people say we don't talk in Newark or work together, please, that doesn't stand up to any kind of scrutiny because the Newark Community Development Network has been around for over 30 years. We've been meeting almost every month. These people can tell you because I'm always getting on them the meetings next month. And people from the city have joined us. So we've been working and we finally have, like I said, an administration that's actually putting into practice many of the equity issues that we've been trying to push. Um, and then I can't ignore, of course, since David was here, the role of the way this represents the kind of intersectional commitment to including the community as an equal partner, along with the city, obviously, the administration, the council, and some key anchor institutions. To me, the major one is, not just because I graduated from there, is Rutgers University, Newark, under the leadership of Nancy Cantor, who has been totally dedicated and invested in this kind of cross-sectional partnership uh, towards making Newark uh, a city that is equitable, a city that is humane, and that is worthy of its residents. Um, this commission, again, represents just another step in that path. Um, we have work to do. It needs to be built out. Uh, the people who are on it will be working hard and will be needing help and input from people all over the city. This is not a closed circuit thing. Uh, it will be open and inclusive, um, and we'll be listening. Uh, so the groups, again, NCDN, we are proud and glad to be part of this, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and uh, I know as part of a new community, we certainly are proud to be part of this. Um, and so. We just have some work to do. We need to get on, get the show going. 
Thank you. Now I would like to introduce Aisha Glover, President and CEO of the Nork Alliance. Good after afternoon, morning, we're still in the morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say a quick congratulations to the mayor, to the Department of Economic and Housing Development, um, to Al Tariq, um, everybody really just coming together. And be clear that we want development, we want growth, we want investment. We also want jobs, access to housing, uh, local procurement dollars being spent here in the city of Newark. Uh, but across the country, when you look at commissions like this, they don't typically exist as commissions. They exist as staff people inside of City Hall overseeing equitable development or equity, uh, inclusive growth. They come with a bunch of different titles. But I think it's unique that this will be a commission and it's intentionally structured to be a collaboration a cross sector of voices who help shape policy, serve, and serve as a bit of an equity compass. So we know what the moral compass is. This, this commission will really help serve as an equity compass. And so for the Newark Alliance, I just wanna make sure that everybody's clear that the corporate and anchor community is supportive of this. There are many initiatives underway right now in the city underscoring this, this model and this belief. And I do believe that we can be a model across the country for what inclusive development can look like. We have the right leadership, we have the commitment, and we have the collaboration. So congratulations. And now at this time, I would like to bring up our Honorable Mayor, Raz J. Baraka. Thank you. Uh, I wanna say finally, but uh, just means that it really is the beginning and not the, the end. Uh, I want to thank Al Tariq, obviously Shabazz, for uh, taking on this effort uh, for us in the city. Uh, obviously, all of our partners uh, who struggle with us daily to make sure that we uh, do the right thing uh, and, uh, and are part of this struggle with us. Uh, you know who you are. Um, uh, we want to thank Rutgers, who is an undeniable partner with us in the city. Uh, without them, many of the things that we think about, try to accomplish, try to do, uh, we would not be able to do. Rutgers uh, is with us lockstep from the beginning to the end, and we appreciate that. Uh, the, the efforts that they give us is, is incalculable in terms of the worth, the value. Uh, one of the most important things is that they increased the enrollment of Newark students into their school by 80%. Now, over the last few years, it's something that hasn't been done in the last 20-something years. They've done in the last five. So. Uh, and, and there's work happening, you know, because of NCLC and the collaboration and things like that. Uh, we make these things happen. What, what we're trying to do is something that has not been done anywhere in the country. So it has not been successful. I don't want to say it hasn't been done, it just hasn't been successful. We go all over the country trying to figure out how to challenge the contradictions of capitalism and Western democracy. And that's really what it is. How to deal with the contradiction of, of growth and wealth coming into communities at the same time. Uh, without, uh, you know, stampeding on the, the, the development of poor and working class people uh, in these communities. It's easier said than done. There are a lot of people who have a lot of uh, academic and activist information about why we should do this and why we shouldn't do that. But the reality is, um, I, I understand that I have privilege. There are a lot of people in here who have privilege. That means that if there's not a store in my community, I can get in a car and go to another community and go to the store. If there's not a supermarket in my neighborhood, I can get in the car and go to a supermarket in somebody else's neighborhood. If there's not a place to hang out downtown Newark, I can get in the car and drive to New York City and hang out in New York City. I can hang out in Hoboken, in Jersey City, in the downtown areas. I can participate in the development in those communities and put my money in those communities and watch those communities develop and come back to Newark and lament about how our city is underdeveloped. So the, the, the real contradiction is that we have to develop the city. We have to have a place to sit down and eat. We have to have housing in our community. We have to have wealth in our neighborhoods. We have to uh, you know, have roads that, are, uh, you know, that you can travel on. You know, we have to have the same things that other communities have. We deserve it. And in order for the community to develop, we need it. But we have to, we have to find a way to have those things 
uh, and stay here at the same time. And that's the challenge. That's the challenge. If we had the answers, we'd just snap our fingers and it would get done. If everybody who got angry knew how to do it, they would have done it, done it 10 years ago, right? But at, at the end of the day, it takes hard work and it takes another kind of emotion. It takes an emotion that has nothing to do with anger. It's an emotion that has something to do with love it has, and it has a lot more to do with uh, persistence. How do we persist uh, in this environment? And, and there are a lot of people who have decided to be builders, and I appreciate that um, because we don't have all the answers. And Aisha, as Aisha said, we uh, don't believe that uh, just by establishing Al Tariq in that position, uh, as they've done all over the country, and we've taken that uh, uh, as a way uh, by itself to get these things to be fixed, that we have to have other voices, other thoughts, other ideas, other people uh, at the table uh, to be able to make these things accomplishable. There are a few things that we're doing already. Um, that we pulled. We didn't think of this on our own. We, inclusionary zoning is not a new idea. There are cities that have done this before us. Many of them done it too late, but inclusionary zoning, we didn't think of it. We have borrowed it and we have Newarkized it, right? We, 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 we put it here in Newark. Uh, right to counsel is not our idea. We, 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 we're pulling it here to, to, to make it happen uh, in our city. Um, you know, th these are not uh, novel kind of concepts. We've just decided that the novelty is that we're going to do it together and, as opposed to one or two individuals uh, trying to make it happen. Uh, and there, there, there are a few pieces in that that don't happen in other communities. Using wealth from the downtown community to, to, to fill gaps and subsidize low-income uh, uh, buildings across the city of Newark, right? To have uh, minority co-developers on projects and not just uh, subcontractors or employees uh, on projects. Uh, that's, that's, that's a new idea. Uh, even the expansion of the right to counsel, to provide counseling for people as, as, as uh, I spoke to David Trout and he gave me incredible ideas that I brought back immediately of things that we need to expand and do as we do the right to counsel here uh, in the city of Newark. This is hard work and it, and it doesn't mean, and I know there are people that say because we got this, does it mean tomorrow things are going to be heaven? Uh, absolutely not. Uh, this is not the real world. Uh, if you believe that, I think that th these are opportunities for us to build on a foundation that has been established that was not there previously. And we begin to build on that foundation to challenge the kind of principles and ideas that exist in development here in the Western democracy and figure out how to make those things work for working people. In essence, keep people alive long enough so they could figure out or come up with better ideas than I had in, the, in, in my time being here uh, uh, in this helm in the city. And I'm not going to be here forever, but I'm going to do what I can do while I am here for better or for worse. So that being said, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for being here and, all the, again, all of the partners that come to the table and struggle with us around trying to make sure that these things are, uh, are working. Um, so uh, that being said, I don't know if it's time to ask question, answer questions, and I'll answer a few questions. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, has strong right control laws, inclusionary zoning, it's trying to pass right to counsel, um, but the success will be measured on how that's implemented and enforced. One of the, um, the statistics from David Trout's report was that half of the units that are eligible for right control aren't even registered, right? So it's sort of hard to enforce that. What sort of powers will the commission have in terms of enforceability and in terms of implementation to make sure that the, the legislation that you do have is being carried out and being used? Well, the, the people in the departments are enforcing those, those, that legislation. The, what uh, David Trout and Climb and the commission will do is point out those deficiencies. Uh, we are registering. And see, this, these, are, these apartments have not just not been registered today. They have been not registered for 15, 20 years. Uh, and so we're trying to register them now. And what I said earlier, when you take on a problem, you become the progenitor of that problem, right? So it's, it's like you, it began with you. But uh, I would like to, uh, you know, thank uh, you know, the folks ov over there in rent control who are actively going after these folks and making them register their apartments. As a matter of fact, we had a discussion about doing it more vigorously yesterday, uh, going out there to make that happen. And I would say the folks on the commission begin to figure out how we can do that better. We got a lot of people that could tell us that it's not happening, but we have to figure out is we need some people that's going to tell us how to make it happen. Uh, and so uh, 
you know, Jay Lee, who's sitting here in front of us, who has, who has brought the city uh, additional revenue that we've never realized before because we have never gone after people who haven't registered their apartments. So he's already brought us additional revenue. We've already created a, a plan to begin to get revenue and register uh, new apartments that come online uh, as we go. So that is uh, absolutely happening right now. Yes. Um, I, I had a question more about how the city has kind of um, worked with the private sector in this because if a developer wanted to come in and, you know, buy a property, you know, nothing's really stopping them from buying that property and setting up, um, you know, luxury units instead of, and, and incorporating affordable units in there too. So, like, kind of what can the city do, like, legally too, to kind of, balance things out without kind of stopping um, the city it. from growing, too. So there are, are going to be a couple of developers on the uh, representing in the Equitable Growth Commission. We're not, we're not, not including them uh, in this process. We want their ideas and their focus. And you may not realize it, but there are some developers who actually uh, believe that we should be uh, developing affordable housing. But you're correct. The only way that the city can make and, and, and you know, we have to educate a lot of people around this. Make uh, developers do anything is if they're getting something in turn return from the city. If they're getting a variance, for the most part, uh, if they are uh, getting a tax abatement or, or some kind of subsidy uh, from the city or the state government, uh, for that matter. And then we have opportunities to uh, leverage those things and get them to provide, whether it's community benefits, which we had a long discussion about, or real programs. And so what, what they've got us tied on is this community benefit. So we go to the community and people start saying they want this, they want that, they want this for a community benefit. Uh, we look at that in the city, and we talked about it at length yesterday. Uh, the community benefits to me are favors. The real community benefit is minority co-development. The real community benefit is the, the development of affordable housing. Uh, that, that's what we want. Uh, from that, and we want jobs from that as well. Those, those, all the other things, build the park, do do all this other stuff. Those, those are, you know, that's gravy on top of the the things that you are that you are obligated to do. And the reason that we set these policies and laws in place is to stop us from having these like individual one-off negotiations and begin to have a boilerplate that forces all developers from the beginning to have a floor that they work from. They understand if they have to develop in Newark, these are things that they have to accomplish. They have to develop a performer that incorporates these ideas. Are there any concerns about scaring off developers when you put so many different hands in the pot, so many different people have ideas? Well, yeah, I, I think, you know, that's a question that developers raise themselves, right? Uh, uh, but I think because of the way the market is and what's happening, uh, you know, I, it's just gonna take a lot more to scare developers off because they're making money. There's a lot of money to be made uh, now in the city of Newark, and, and uh, these folks are, are going to come. As long as the market has saturated in lower Manhattan and is saturated in Brooklyn and saturated in Jersey City and Hoboken, if an affordable house, affordable apartment in, in Manhattan is $3,000, then uh, you, know, you can't even afford that you know, and you have a regular job, then that's going to force folks to come to different parts of the, of the city. And so the, the residential uh, market here in the city is outrageous and, and, and people are coming here because they're gonna they're gonna be able to make money and the density around the train station all of these things are drawing people to the city and which which gives us the opportunity now to create policy to help us leverage these people coming into coming in our city now if we don't do it now we will have no leverage we just have our lip poked out and the 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 the, the, the dichotomy of that is if you know uh, uh, if we uh, just basically say no to everything, then we miss the boat. And so the, the idea is we have to have some level of development or you can't distribute wealth that you don't have, right? And so you have to bring wealth into the city and redistribute it in a way that most of us can benefit from it. Yes. Could you just tell me how it works on a practical level? So do you meet with yeah. the people, you meet with the commission before approving <coughs> monthly, you know, does a developer come and then before approving any sort of new development to meet with the commission? So, no, so what, so what the commission does, and they, and they will meet, so what the commission does is have an overall view 
of the way the city is moving in a direction and the policies. They review the policies, the practices, the laws, the, the things that, and maybe individual projects and begin to make recommendation uh, because people on the uh, commission, uh, Altariq uh, Shabazz is a member of EHD, is an employee, and so who meets with me every week. So we begin to discuss, uh, you know, policies, how to move forward, ideas. The same way we created inclusionary zoning. Like inclusionary zoning wasn't created because, you know, the mayor said, oh, I have this idea. What happened was we brought developers in the room and we called some of our, our folks who've done this before, Richard, uh, Joe, we brought them in a the room, uh, Ray Ocasio with these folks, and let them debate in front of me, talk about these issues, meet around them, and we created inclusionary zoning uh, based on discussions that people had. Now, all of the time, I don't think things will always come out the way people want it to in, in initially, but that's the, the whole job of us amending and pushing legislation as it goes. That's what democracy is about. There's, you, don't, you don't have just one shot and that's it. I think once a law it, it be, becomes a law, it sets a culture, and we begin to push it to become stronger and stronger as we go. But that's what happens. The, the commission will rec make recommendation, and we'll take that recommendation and advisement and try to move forward on it. The commission itself was a recommendation from Klein. <laughs> in, in reading your statement um, on the press release, I saw, you know, you don't want New York to come from Brooklyn. Don't you think Mayor de Blasio might say otherwise? Like, what's the, what's the rationality behind it? No, it's, it's really symbolic. And, uh, you know, I talk to Mayor de Blasio regularly, but it's, it's symbolic in the sense that, you know, people have this idea. Like, there are people who say to me, uh, I want affordable housing, but I, want it, I don't want it in this neighborhood. I want it in that neighborhood. The problem with that concept is that when people develop, they don't say, I want to develop in this neighborhood, you know, because this stuff is happening. Once the market turns, they're going to go to the neighborhood you don't want to be in, and they're going to develop there, and you won't be able to live there. The, the, the point is we, we do not want to wait for the market to dictate to us, uh, you know, how to develop and move in our city. We want to influence the market, but we also want to use some of those market forces uh, against, the, against itself. So begin to use some of those market forces to create the, uh, something different than, than what the market kind of anticipates. So we, they may say we need to build all of these things, and we may agree you can, you can have some of this, you can have this, you can have this, but as a result, we need to take uh, the wealth that's created from that and begin to develop in neighborhoods that have been neglected for 30, 40, uh, 50 years uh, in our city and empower people in the process of getting that done and not wait for the market to turn and then you, you feel like, oh, I want to go move up and develop on Willoughby Street now. Yes. How will the members of the commission be chosen? And how many will be on well, the speak to that. Uh, So there will be 15 members on the commission. And we will start uh, accepting resumes and cover letters for the commission starting today. And we'll end around uh, January 15th. Uh, so the email uh, for, for folk to send their resumes will be uh, D Middleton, uh, Middleton D at I'll give it I'll give it out because that's a lot for y'all to remember. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and then the department, the director, the deputy mayor, myself, uh, the mayor, and other EHD staff, we will review the resumes and then we'll make uh, recommendations to the mayor because he's going to appoint those on the council. The commission, uh, I have to talk to the clerk's office to see how long it actually take, but we should be uh, up and running in, uh, in January, 30 days. It, it takes 30 days for the actual ordinance to become law. Yes? I have actually more of like a technical question too. I mean, isn't the whole city kind of deemed like, um, like an area of redevelopment or something like that? Uh, area of need of rehabilitation. Yeah, rehabilitation. Yes. So, right. How does the city kind of use that classification to um, kind of influence developments and where they right. grow up? That's, that's, that's why we have the ability to appoint developers to give uh, redevelopment agreements, things that you see going back and forth in the council. Other, other places can't do that. They have to always do RFPs and other processes. The city of Newark does not have to do that because it's an area in need of rehabilitation. Uh, when we move from that to in some areas, uh, areas in need of redevelopment, uh, where tax abatements are allowable, where um, uh, city can 
use eminent domain. Uh, we can influence development. Uh, we have legislation, hopefully, going to be signed uh, by the governor uh, that allows us to uh, create land trusts or land banking uh, in the city ourselves, because developers usually do land banks, meaning they, they buy property and they hold on to it for 10, 15 years, and they influence how, that, uh, how it's developed and, and how it's sold. The city begins to do that, and we begin to have influence on how it's developed and sold. We got it passed uh, under the Christie administration. He vetoed it uh, prayerfully uh, with the work of some folks here on this side who will get it passed again. Hopefully we have the governor will sign it this time. We have a strategy uh, with our partners to figure out how to create land trust in the city that we could plan the kind of development that we want. With the commission being created to address these concerns that come with the growing pains of expansion and whatnot, can you speak to uh, what the foresight and discussions have been on when the city reaches critical mass and the issues and concerns move from growth to maintaining you know, the expansion? We, we already have those discussions, and, and those discussions are uh, the kind of tension between uh, the increase in police staff, increase in fire department, the, the discussion around roads and, and congestion. Uh, I, we just had a county meeting uh, with all of our partners in the OEM about what happens if, you know, the state decides to close 280 again or 78. We've had follow, two follow-up meetings after that. Uh, so those tensions are already being felt. Uh, we began thinking about that when we were contemplating the, the, the Amazon uh, piece and you know, which we believe we won four months ago. Uh, so we, we, we are already planning uh, uh, in advance uh, what the city needs to do and what it should look like as a result of the kind of critical mass that you're talking about uh, and what that critical mass actually should look like, uh, you know, and not just point taken over here, not just the way Brooklyn looks, but in a way that uh, it is more diverse, diverse in income and diverse in, in people. Thank you for, for coming out. Appreciate it.